Hi, it's Melanie with Growers Notebook. Today, we'll deal with how to deliver nutrition to your plants by talking about some basic systems of irrigation. Let's grow. So far, we've talked about some of the science and ideas behind plant nutrition. Now, we'll briefly introduce different styles of irrigation widely used in hydroponic gardens. While there are endless ways to water our plants, we'll focus on some of the more common methods. Before we get into automated irrigation systems, let's take a moment to talk about hand watering and some of the advantages and disadvantages of this option. First of all, there's the ease. You need next to nothing to get started. Mix your newts, put it in a watering can, and you're good to go. Then there's the attention to detail. You can examine each plant and water more or less on a case-by-case -case basis. And while you're there, you can spend time making sure you don't miss any other issues with your plants, such as mold or pest. And you're in control of monitoring the flow, which means you're making sure there's no water wasted. Of course, the flip side is that this method can be time consuming. The lack of automation requires vigilance, meaning you need to be available and present when your plants need you. While this hands-on technique gives you control of delivery, the absence of mechanical automation increases your chance of losing uniformity. Extended use of the hand watering method is normally reserved for growing in soil. Inert growing media often has a much higher porosity that requires more low volume and higher frequency feeding. Some things to remember when hand watering. If you're outdoors, water early in the day. If you're indoors, water one to two hours after the light comes on. Allow the plant to begin transpiring water from its roots to its leaves before watering in. Avoid watering too close to the night cycle. Plants will cease to transpire and roots are left drowning in overly saturated environment deprived of oxygen. Root rot and fungus becomes more aggressive under these conditions. Don't water just to hand water. Because you're hand watering, you may have the urge to water every plant in your garden. Resist arbitrary waterings and determine plant by plant if a watering is necessary. Overwatering will lead to similar conditions to watering too close to the night cycle and can be harmful to your plants. Water at the base of your plant and directly into the root zone. Be sure to water deeply and in fewer intervals to reach the most newly developed roots and encourage more root growth further out into the media. Frequent light waterings will result in shallow root growth and stunt the overall growth of the plant. When growing in soil, make sure to use a fertilizer appropriate for the media. Avoid overly synthetic formulas that will inhibit microbe activity in soil and deprive your plants of the wonderful benefits of soil. Veg Plus Bloom Dirty has carbohydrates and organics that will encourage your soil's beneficial bacteria and fungi. Mix six grams of Veg Plus Bloom Dirty for best results in a soil garden. For more detailed instructions, visit our usage calculator at the link below. For our first automated system, we'll talk about one of the most widely used systems in hydroponics the ebb and flow technique, also known as the flood and drain system. Growers are attracted to this recirculating method for its simplicity in design, ease of maintenance, and the low chance of system failure. A few downsides of the ebb and flow technique is the oftentimes inefficient consumption of water non-uniform water distribution, and the increased possibility of sharing reservoir-borne pathogens across your plants. For this irrigation system, we'll need the following components. Reservoir, flood tray, water pump, tubing, ebb and flow fittings. As the name suggests, 
These systems deliver nutrient solution by filling vessels that hold our plants via water pump and often use gravity or a pump to drain. We'll start by drilling out holes and installing our fittings. You'll notice that there are risers on one side to control the water level and drain off overflow. Also notice that one of these fittings is a half inch barb while the other is a three quarter inch. The larger fitting is for the overflow and the smaller is for the fill side. Next, we'll set the flood tray above our reservoir at a slight pitch to allow gravity to drain the tray. Plants can be set into individual flood sites or on a common flood tray as you see here. Inside our reservoir, we'll place our pump and use the vinyl tubing to connect it to our half inch fitting. Next, fill your reservoir with water and mix your nutrients at the appropriate dilution rate. Next, we'll just set the pump to a timer and our ebb and flow system is ready for growing. Watering intervals will vary across media types and increase in frequency as the plants develop. When the pump cycles off, notice that the water drains back the way it came in. Monitor pH, EC, and water levels of the reservoir daily to be aware of any necessary adjustments. NFT, but not that NFT. We're talking about the nutrient film technique. It's an efficient hydroponic system that much like the ebb and flow system, uses a pump and gravity to recirculate nutrient solution to plants. For this system, we'll need the following components. Reservoir, three inch PVC, net cups, water pump, vinyl tubing. Plant sites are placed across the growing bed. In this case, it's a three inch PVC pipe. We'll place the growing bed at a slight pitch in order to let gravity feed the nutrient solution back into the reservoir after it's been pumped up to the system. Instead of flooding the media, nutrient solution is pumped at a slow flow to allow a slightly film to flow beneath the plant sites. As the plant develops, roots will grow into the stream and continue to be nourished by the nutrient solution. The NFT system can be ran with either a continuous stream or with intermittent on and off pump times. As a recirculating system, this method shares similar disadvantages such as an increased risk of spreading reservoir-borne pathogens and diseases. While the nutrient film technique is efficient, it's limited in the type and size of plant that it can support. Deep water culture or DWC is a style that is used by growers that are looking for explosive growth. Shorter vegetative periods help turn crops around at a much faster rate than most systems. For this system, we'll need the following components. A wide lip basket to support the plant in an inert substrate, air pump, quarter inch tubing, air stones, and a bucket normally black to keep the light from forming algae. Today, we'll use a white bucket for demonstration purposes. We'll fill the bucket with water and mix nutrient into solution. We can consider this media-less system in which any substrate used is only to support the plant. Roots grow fully exposed into the solution aerated with an air pump and stones. The oxygen-rich environment is ideal for roots to develop rapidly and support expedited vegetative growth. Without a media to buffer the roots, sensitivity to pH, EC, and temperature are more apparent in this hydroponic system and need to be monitored to stay within ideal ranges. While the deep water culture system promotes rapid plant growth, it's equally aggressive in promoting other types of life, including harmful bacteria and fungi. Use hydroponic research's flow to mitigate excessive microdevelopment and counter rises in pH from injecting oxygen into solution. 
The most common automated irrigation technique preferred by both hobbyists and commercial growers is the top drip. With a little bit of hardware and installation, this technique will offer a significant amount of advantages with very little downside. You'll save time from the automation, you'll be more efficient by controlling the amount of water delivered through the system, you'll be able to deliver very precise volumes at specific times uniformly across your garden. And in a drain to waste system, you'll eliminate the risk of spreading systemic pathogens and diseases from a shared recirculating reservoir. In our next installment, we'll get into the details of top drip irrigation, including the necessary hardware and important mechanics to consider. Finding the right system to fit your style will take time and experimentation, but whatever method you use, hydroponic research is here to make sure you're delivering the best nutrients available to your plants. Well, that wraps it up for this episode of Grower's Notebook. Join us again next time when we continue exploring more advanced nutrient delivery methods like fertigation. So like and subscribe and hit that notification button to stay up to date with the latest episodes. And don't forget to leave a comment below about what topics or information you might want us to go over in this series. I'm Melanie, and thank you for watching Growers Notebook.